So, um, I have posted um, a lot of videos about about the Bible. I even have two series um, about the Old Testament, and then the other ones about the New Testament. And um, with this class, I just kind of wanted to make it a little bit more narrowly focused, you know, a lot more um, condensed, I guess. Uh, I, I, I want to talk about the whole Bible, and I want to talk about it in such a way where if you're not familiar with the Bible, that's okay. It seems like maybe the other ones had a little bit too steep of a learning curve. Maybe I was trying to say too much. Um, and, and that's what this class is about, trying to maybe break that down into more manageable pieces. So, let's talk about the Bible. Now, the Bible, uh, there, there are lots of different translations or whatnot, and... Um, and different things, and I'll try to I'll try to break it down as easy as I can. Um, in your basic Bible, there's there's um, there's kind of two sets of books. There's the Old Testament. Uh, this starts with the book of Genesis, and it goes through till the book of Malachi. Okay, um, and these are all things that happened before Christ, um, which is you know obviously kind of like the focal point of the whole Bible. Um, and then there's the New Testament, which is everything written after Christ. Um, and it starts with Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, um, and then it ends with the with the Book of Revelation. Okay. Um, so there, there's a total of 66 books in the Bible, um, and I'll talk about why some books or some Bibles have more books um, in a minute. Um, and and so it's written by approximately 40 people. You know. Um, just as for an example, um, Moses, who wrote Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and then you know Joshua wrote some in there too. Um, then uh, you know you have um, the prophet Samuel, you have the prophet Jeremiah, who who wrote um, possibly quite a few. Um, you have obviously in the New Testament you have uh, Paul, who wrote some. You have uh, Matthew and, and Luke, and so on and so forth. Uh, so you have a lot of different people. Um, writing and you have 66 different books so there's there's quite a few different books in there um, and they all kind of are a little bit different too um, but they all still um, you know at their core say the same thing that they all they all um, complement each other um, it's not like one of them disproves all the other ones um, and so when we talk about the Bible we we reference a a part of the back of the Bible. See, originally there were no such things as um, chapters and verses and whatnot. We added those later to help be able to find um, the specific part easier. Um, and and so uh, how we how we reference that we say first the book and then the chapter and then the verse. And, and remember, the Bible is a book full of smaller books. Okay, like Genesis is a book of the Bible. Does that make sense? So uh, when somebody says somebody says like Genesis 1-1 or like how it's written on the screen there, what that means is the book of Genesis in the Bible, the first chapter, and then um, the next number is the verse in that chapter. So the first number is, is going to be your chapter, and the second one's going to be the verse in the chapter. Um, so Genesis 1-1 is the book of Genesis, the first chapter, the first verse. Um Another example of that would be like Matthew 12, 10. Well, that's the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 10. Um, I, I know for some people this might seem like, oh, who ever knows that, but um, don't feel like um, somehow you're stupid for not knowing these kinds of things. I mean, I, I grew up in the church, so I, I understand it a lot easier than other people might. Um, so as far as the books that we use, um, we use the same Old Testament books as the Jews did. Um, I mean, we, we don't really the the Protestant Bible doesn't really have anything added in there. It's it's the exact same thing as the Jews uh, believed, which um, is important. The Old Testament was actually the Bible that the New Testament Church used. Okay, I know a lot of times people think, oh, New Testament that's for the church today, and Old Testament is. They're just, it's just not for us today, but that, that that's actually a foreign idea. Um, the New Testament Church um, believed that the Old Testament scriptures were still their Bible. Okay, um, and then the New Testament books um, were accept, were widely accepted um, by the church at, at large. And I have other other um, cor, um, 
um, videos on YouTube talking about um, how how a book ended up in the can in the Bible and whatnot. Um, but that's just a little bit too advanced for this class. I just want to keep things kind of simple. So the, the books in the New Testament are books that, that were widely accepted um, and, and 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 were actually from the people from the people who wrote them. And the Old Testament books are books that the Jews actually had in their Bible. Um, now there are other things um, called the pseudepigrapha pseudo pseudo and like the lost gospels and that kind of stuff. Um, so let me kind of address that um, very quickly. Um, the the books in the pseudepigrapha um, and the apocryphal books and whatnot, they aren't actually uh, part of inspired scripture. They are um, historical, they are interesting and important, but they're not... Um, they're not um, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and and there's a few things. First off, they they contradict the, the other parts of Scripture, um, and they also were written much later. They pretend to be written by people who they weren't. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, the the late the the lost gospels or the Gnostic gospels, you know, like the Gospel of Thomas, were not except were, were written all much later, and they were and they were all added later. Um, now, the only exception to the Gnostic gospels that that may have been earlier, um, early enough to actually be part of of the Bible, is the Gospel of Thomas. But once again, it it, it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with the rest of Scripture. Like it, it just it just kind of um, contradicts. Um, so they were written written much later, and um, they were added later. They were not seen as scripture uh, for a while. Um, it has been said that the only reason why the Catholic Church um, added them, added the not not the not the Gnostic Gospels, the Pseudepigrapha, um, to their Bible, was because the Pope was trying to validate his um, his uh, authority. Now, I'm not going to comment one way or another. All I am going to say is if you have a Catholic Bible, it is going to have some other books in there. Uh, but it's important that you, that you understand that those books do contradict the rest of Scripture. They, do, um, they, they don't support the rest of Scripture. Um, yeah, and so that's why some, some Bibles have uh, more books than other Bibles. Um, now, as far as um, translations, hmm, it doesn't seem like it's going, does it? There we go. Um, as far as translations, um, a translation is just that. It's a translation. There are a lot of different translations that, that, that are good. Um, but ultimately, unless you know Greek and Hebrew as a language, the, you know, the ancient languages of, of Hebrew and, and Koine Greek, you're not going to be able to, understand, to read the Bible in, in its original manuscripts, um, or I should say the copies of the, of the original manuscripts, but that's um, a little bit too advanced for this class. Um, so you're going to have to settle for a translation. Now, there are some people who say King James Version only. Um, there's no real support for that. Get whatever Bible you um, you understand, if that makes sense. I like the English Standard Version, ESV. I like the New American Standard Bible, NASB. Um, and the NIV has received a lot of criticism. However, it was bought out by another um, by other people in 2011. Uh, redone and everything. It, it's really a really good translation now, but if you buy it, make sure you get the one released in 2011, not 85 or whatever it was. Um, and you can read the King James Version if if you understand it. There's no problem there. The only translation I would say do not read is the New World Translation. Um, the translation is just it's just ridiculous. There are books, there are words added for for absolutely no reason, words taken out for no reason, words changed for no reason, um, all to support the Jehovah's Witness doctrine without any actual basis for making those claims. Uh, but anyways, I'm getting off topic. Exodus 24:4. This is what the Bible um, claims to be of itself, um, not what people make it out to be. This is what the Bible itself claims. Um, because when we're looking at the Bible, it's important to think, what does the Bible say it is? Exodus 24, 4. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. So what we're reading in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those are the words of the Lord. Isaiah 44, 6. Now Isaiah is, is a prophet um, in, in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. 
Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Um, so right there you have again, thus says the Lord. It's, it's claiming that it's recording the actual words of God himself. John 14, 26. <coughs> Oof. Before I tell you, allergy season really is bad this year. Uh, John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So when they were writing the, um, the Gospels, at least, um, the Holy Spirit reminded them of what Jesus had done and said. He... he, he he guided that process. Now, obviously, if you're a Christian, you believe that the Holy Spirit was also played a role uh, for the rest of Scripture as well. Um, 2 Timothy uh, 3.16. All Scripture is breathed out by God and Profitable for teaching, for proof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So there we have again that it is breathed out by God, that, it, that God is the one who had, who had the, um, excuse me, that God is the one who put it into motion. Second Peter one twenty one, excuse me, it says. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Um, there again, the, 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 these things that people were saying, said in the Bible, were, were, were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Um, and then chapter 3, verse 16. As he does in all his letters, uh, he's talking about Paul, so I'll just back up to 15. And count the patience of our Lord uh, as, and this is verse 15, of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in, um, when he speaks in them of these matters. These, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. Um, he's clearly talking about Paul's uh, writings being, uh, being scripture. So how does the Bible apply to us? Well, there's a lot of different um, writing styles in the Bible. I'm sure if you read Genesis, you're going to see a big difference from the book of Psalms, or maybe a big difference from um, 1 Corinthians. There's a lot of different writing styles. There's there's stories. Um, we see this with Genesis about you know the ark um, and and the flood and the global flood. We see um, you know uh, the story of Adam and Eve. We see um, in in first and second second for first and second kings we see you know the stories of of the, of the different kings of Israel and Judah and whatnot. So with these stories, they they teach lessons. The the events themselves teach lessons, um, and, and that's kind of how you understand how it applies to you today. You read the story, and it will show you something throughout through that story. Um, and then there's uh, laws. This would be like um, Leviticus, for instance. Um, laws teach um, th th what they do is is it teaches God's holiness and His morality through through commands. Now, the 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 law was given to the Jews um, at that time, and it doesn't directly um, relate to the Christian church of today. However, it does still have principles that relate. There is no bit of scripture that does not relate, um, that does not apply to us. Sometimes we have to do a little bit more digging to get there though. And the and, and the and the laws are, are parts that, that maybe aren't as easy to understand how it applies to us today. Um, Then there's poetry. Um, this is stuff like um, Psalms. Or if you read um, Isaiah, there's a lot of poetry in um, 
in Isaiah. Uh, you know, in different parts of the Bible, there, there's poetry. And the idea of, of poetry is, is it's emotional language. It says stuff in a roundabout way. It says it in, a, in, a, in, a fi in figures of speech, metaphors, and that kind of stuff. It doesn't say necessarily straight out. It's also not necessarily literal. Okay? Um, for instance, it might talk about trees waving their hands. Well, trees don't really wave. You know, it's more talking about, like, let's say, wind, for instance. Um, so poetry doesn't always um, come out and just say it. It, it kind of takes an indirect path. Um, whereas stories, I mean, the stories of the Bible are, are factual. They actually did happen. But they may include details that aren't, aren't true. I, I, let, let me kind of clarify. In Genesis, it it records Adam and Eve and how they sinned against God. That happened. Okay, but Satan, speaking through the serpent, told them something that was not true. He told them, "You will not die if you eat this." Now that wasn't true. That that was a false statement because Satan is a liar. However, the words that Satan spoke were accurately recorded. If that makes sense. Um, so everything in the Bible is factual and true, but um, not everybody who talks in the Bible is saying something true. Does that make sense? Um, as another example, um, in Genesis we see some people marry multiple people, uh, have multiple wives. That doesn't mean that the Bible is saying, yes, you should go and do likewise. Does that make sense? You have to kind of understand the context and kind of read the whole thing. That makes sense. Don't don't pick and choose parts of scripture. You read the whole thing, and it just has a way of clarifying itself. Um, there's the prophets, which is basically um, a series of sermons that are focused on restoring the Israelites back to God. It's focused on on drawing them to repentance, so that they would turn from the evil that they were doing and and, and worship and seek after God. Um, now I, I'm 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 making this very um, like I say, very concise, because I'm trying not to confuse. I'm trying to make it easier to understand. Um, then there's books which are more wisdom-oriented. Um, Job, uh, for instance, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Now, these also don't necessarily just come out and say something. They kind of have a roundabout way to make you think. Um, for instance, Ecclesiastes deals with what's my purpose in life. Proverbs deals with what should, how should I conduct my life. Um, Job deals with why do righteous people suffer. Um, so it answers life's questions through practical instruction. Very, wisdom literature oftentimes isn't real uh, mystical or real um, spiritual. It's just real basic um, down-to-earth stuff. Uh, whereas poetry was real imaginative, real creative, um, wisdom just causes the wisdom books causes to causes to think more. Um, and as far as what books are 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 stories, what books are laws, what what books are are poetry, um, a lot of times they'll have multiple things mixed in there. Um, for instance, Exodus starts with stories, but then we get to chapter 15 and it hits poetry. And then you hit chapter, like, I think it's 17 or somewhere around there, and it goes to law. So a lot of times, the different types of Bible writings will be all mixed into a book. Does that make sense? And as you're reading, you should be able to, to tell the different styles. But throughout the course, I'll try and break it down and say, um, the book of Proverbs, this is a book, uh, this is a wisdom book. And I'll try to make it um, simple. Um, then there's the, the letters. Now, these are um, situation specific, which means they were a letter written by someone specifically to address a certain problem or issue. So, the letters answer specific problems through direct correspondence. Um, they were writing directly to the person that the problem was about. Uh, 1 Corinthians was written to the church in a city called Corinth, and Paul was addressing problems that they were having. Does that make sense? Um, so does it still apply to us? Yes, absolutely. Everything in the Bible still applies to us today. We just have to do sometimes do a little bit of digging to get that application, to see how it applies to us, to see um, how we can benefit from it, how we can learn, what we can learn. Um, but more important than understanding the different types of writings that there are in the Bible, 
um, is, is keep reading the word. You stay in the word. You read it, read it, read it, read it. When you're done reading it, read some more. Read it over again. Um, pay attention to the words used. Just keep reading it. But then also add that with prayer. Um, when when you when you're in the when you're in the Word, seek the one who caused the Bible to be inspired in the first place, the Holy Spirit. Ask for God to, to illuminate your heart, to help you to understand the things of Scripture, um, and, and He will. Um, also, get in church. You know, um, sermons and whatnot are a great way to kind of really latch in there. Get, get a Bible translation that you understand. Um, get maybe a, a Bible that has um, notes at the bottom that, that'll help you. Um, there's there's this is an ESV Fire Bible. Um, really a, a, a great thing, especially um, for people who who aren't used to the Bible. Um, Pay careful attention. Really, when you're reading the Bible, pay attention to to the flow of thought. You know, kind of what was said before this, what was what said after this, um, what is this saying? Kind of really pay attention to the words in the sentence. Pay attention to the paragraph, the flow of thought. Just really pay attention um, and let the Bible answer itself. Oftentimes, the Bible will give us something that we don't like or maybe don't understand. You just keep reading, and, and the Bible has a way of understand of of, of under explaining itself, you just have to keep reading. Sometimes it takes years and years and years. The book of Hebrews in, is a book in the New Testament. It took me years to understand. But I got there by keep by, by staying in the Word, by, by not backing off. A lot of times people try to read it once and be done, and that just doesn't really work out that great. So uh, some common misconceptions about the Bible, some things that people believe that just aren't true. Um, the Bible is not factual. This is not true. Um, Everything in the Bible is, actually happened. Uh, much of it has been record has been um, um, validated, I guess you could say, by archaeology and uh, history and that kind of stuff. Um, some parts haven't, but nothing's been disproven. So, um, the Bible answers every question I have. This is also not true. The Bible does not answer every question we have. The Bible answers what God wanted us to know. It's not going to necessarily tell you how old the earth is. It's not going to tell you that because it, it wasn't concerned with that. It was concerned with teaching people about God. Um, it's not going to answer um, uh, your questions about evolution. It's not going to answer um, um, every historical question you have because, once again, it's a one-sided history for the purpose of instructional learning. It's not just history. It's not just recording pointless details. It's doing it for a purpose. So it's not going to answer every question you have. You have to go to the Bible understanding it as it was meant to be understood. When Moses was writing Genesis, what was he trying to get across? What was his main point? See what I mean? Understand it as it was written. Um, the genealogies are complete. Some people try and, and, and say, yes, it, all the genealogies are complete. It's a complete record of all creation. That's just not true. Um, Certain people are highlighted in, in genealogies. I mean, compare all the genealogies in, in Genesis and Chronicles and in, in, in the Gospels. You'll see that there are people missing. Why? Because it's not concerned with detailing every single person that lived. It mentions people for a specific purpose. Uh, it shows you where it came from, where, where people came from and whatnot. Um, yeah. Uh, everything the Bible records, it condones. Once again, this is not true. The Bible records lots of things, like for instance, people marrying multiple wives. That is, that is not telling you should go marry multiple wives. It's saying what those people did, and then it draws, it teaches you lessons through that. You know what I mean? Like when you're watching a kids show, and the main character will do something, and then by the end of the show, they kind of explain like maybe this is so to teach you not to lie. It, it's kind of like that. Um, also, sometimes people read the Bible and they think because they saw it one time that that means it's a thing that you should do also. For instance, uh, in the book of Judges, there's a judge named Gideon. Now, he lays out a, a, a wool to test the Lord. He says, okay, have it be wet and the ground be dry and I'll know that this is your your, your will. And then he switches it around and say, says, have, have the ground be wet and have the wool be dry. And um, he does this to test the Lord and the Lord does answer. However... The Bible says not to test the Lord, and the thing that he did was divination. He was trying to test the Lord. He was trying to get an answer without seeking the Lord. He was just looking for signs and wonders to validate um, what he wanted to do. That We shouldn't do that. See, some people read that and say, okay, I'm going to test the Lord. God, if this is really your will, um, 
make this happen, make a car honk, make, um, make me run into this person. That's not how God speaks. God speaks by teaching us in his word. God speaks through prayer time. Um, so one time, just because something happened one time in the Bible does not, mean, does not mean that it is a principle that all Christians for all time should do. God never does anything that I won't understand. That's just not true. God does a lot of things that we don't understand. A lot of times the Bible can be a little confusing. Like in Genesis, for instance, it says that the Lord was sorry that he did something. Now what does that mean? See what I mean? Sometimes you can find an answer, but sometimes you won't be able to find an answer. Sometimes God's going to act in a way that you don't like, and you won't understand it. Maybe you never will, but the point isn't whether or not you understand it. It's just that you understand that God does what God does, and he doesn't have to be held to our standard. Does that make sense? Um, basically, he's God and we're not. Um, however, we do know that whatever God does is good. We just don't understand it. Um, there were no other law codes. Actually, there were a lot of different laws that were given before um, Moses wrote the law. Um, a lot of different people claimed to have laws that were given to them by gods. Um, it, a lot of the Bible relates to books that, that, were, um, that were already written. And that brings me to this next one. The Bible was not affected by the culture. Well, it actually was affected by the culture. And a lot of times, um, a, a part of Scripture will kind of play on that. For instance, in, in the book of Exodus, there's a part where, where Moses as a baby is put in a basket in the Nile um, to save his life. Now, there was a story um, that people thought had something to do with Moses, but it actually had something to do with a person called Sargon the Great. I don't know if you've ever um, taken uh, any history classes or anything like that, but Sargon the Great was this guy that ended up being a king um, in a land far away from Egypt. But um, it is very possible that the the um, the the woman who found Moses would have heard this story. It's possible, and I can't really get into the historical detail, but it's possible that she would have heard of the story of Sargon the Great and seen the baby Moses in the basket and relate it and thought maybe this has something to do with the gods, um, and little things like that. Where you can tell that the writer of the Bible was aware of these pagan stories, of these stories from, from non-believers, people who did not believe in, 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 in God. Um, but it does still combat it. A lot of the law has to do specifically with what the Egyptians were doing, with what the Canaanites were doing, um, with what the Babylonians were doing. And if you read through the book of Leviticus, for instance, it'll say things like, don't do this and this and this. Don't do what the people in the land that I'm bringing you to do. Don't do those same things that they do. Do what I have told you to do. Um, and so the Bible is it was written in a, in a situation-specific um, problem, and it has specific ways of answering those. And so to remove the Bible from its original culture, is you're going to have a hard time understanding. Um, but I'm, I'll, I have other Bible classes for that, so if you're interested, look at some of my other videos. Um, also, some people believe that we're going to be able to follow the paper trail. In other words, we'll be able to find the ark that Noah was in when, when the flood happened. Well, it was made out of wood, and that was a long time ago, so we probably won't ever be able to find it. Or, um, hey, the Israelites lived in, in the land of Goshen. That means that we'll be able to uh, find that. Um, well, no. Uh, they possibly lived in, in, in just little huts. It's been a long time in an area that flooded frequently. We'll probably never find any trace of the Israelites being in Egypt, and that doesn't mean it didn't happen. That just means it was a really long time ago. Um, also, sometimes people think that translations are precise. If you're reading your Bible in English, it, there's going to be some areas that may be a little bit vague or maybe they messed up on because a translation is not precise. Maybe compare multiple translations or ask a pastor. Um, also, another idea is that there were, that would mean that there were literally millions of Israelites who left Egypt. Not likely. Possible, but not likely. Um, just because of different um, historical um, points, uh, there probably weren't that many people who left Israel, or, I mean, who left Egypt in the Exodus, um, in the book of Exodus. Um, the reason why it gives such a high number is probably because of either mistranslation or maybe we, we misunderstand the word. For instance, um, in Hebrew, uh, son of doesn't necessarily mean direct descendant. Like, for instance, father, son, it means it can be um, separated by, like, 
a couple gen many generations. For instance, I have a son, and in Hebrew you could say that my dad he's that he is actually my dad's son, and it would skip me, but it would mention him. Be and that's just kind of the way that the language works. I hope that that kind of makes sense. Um, if there are any questions, post them in the comments below. I'd love to hear back from you, and I'd love to respond. And um, hopefully, hopefully that kind of explains some things. Um, and if you didn't understand something, just leave leave a comment below, and I'll try to explain it as best as I can. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching.